Roundup spray is the most frequently sold pesticide in the world. However, there are also farmers who have had dealings with Monsanto against their own will. Probably the most famous one is Percy Schmeisser from Canada. There was one other reason too that we stood up to Monsanto was the fact that they had destroyed what my wife and I had developed over 50 years of research and development. Canola seeds that were resistant to, to various diseases we had on the prairies. They destroyed what we developed. And I'm sure that if, if I would do that Monsanto, I would be thrown in jail. But they can come on to a farmer or pollute, contaminate a farmer's field and destroy what he has worked on and get a lawsuit on top of it. Percy Schmeiser operates a 650 hectare farm which his grandparents, immigrants from Bavaria and Austria, cultivated 100 years ago. In 1996, Monsanto introduced its genetically modified canola to Canada. A heavy storm during harvest time blew it onto Percy Schmeiser's fields. In August 1998, he was sued for illegally cultivating patented seeds from Monsanto. Two courts sentenced him to pay damages to Monsanto of roughly $100,000, but refusing to be intimidated by the chemical giant, he took the case as far as the Canadian Supreme Court. The court made a distinction. On the one hand, as the court made expressly clear, Schmeisser had infringed Monsanto's patent because he had actively cultivated Roundup Ready Canola and was thus no longer an impartial onlooker. On the other hand, the court decided that Schmeisser did not have to pay damages to Monsanto because he had not enriched himself by means of the genetic canola in his grain. Percy Schmeisser is now contemplating a countersuit against the global group on the grounds of environmental contamination, destruction of seeds and defamation of character. International environmental organizations are competing to gain Percy Schmeisser as a speaker, to warn farmers in the US, Europe, and also the so-called third world about chemical multis. In the last two years alone, he has visited over 40 countries. In 1996, when uh, uh, GMO canola was introduced, we didn't have anybody to come and tell us what could happen or may happen. But now people from around the world do know from our experiences what has happened, contamination, loss of biodiversity, loss of our pure seed, and choice taken away. So we now know what can happen because of our experience with their soybeans and with GMO canola. And we know what would happen also with uh, GMO wheat. And that's why uh, other people in around the world can benefit from our experience. We don't have no choice left. Our choice is gone but the people in many parts of the world still have a choice. Globalization has enabled the Maltese to gain control over seeds in the so-called third world. The Asian market is to be developed with genetically modified cotton. However, the chemical corporations are meeting with unexpected resistance. The second way in which biodiversity of our seeds, our medicinal plants, our other useful species is taking place is through genetic engineering. And genetic engineering is a false promise whose high price has already been paid by the farmers of this country. Multinationals have grabbed the seed economy, which used to be a farmer's economy, it used to be a women's economy, and now are bringing unreliable, untested seeds to the market, pushing our farmers to suicide. We happen to be sitting in the middle of all the seed industry shops right here. Monsanto this side, Syngenta shops that side. The next lane is all selling seeds of suicide. Monsanto. 
Vandana Shiva, with a PhD in physics and winner of the Alternative Nobel Prize, has dedicated herself to small Indian farmers and the preservation of biodiversity for almost 20 years. In the meantime, she has become a formidable and loathed opponent of internationally operating agrochemical groups, such as Monsanto, Syngenta, Conagra, Cargill, Bayer and others. Cotton farmers from central India are demonstrating angrily in front of the branch offices of large multinational agrochemical groups. Many of them are on the verge of ruin due to BT cotton, genetically modified cotton from Monsanto, first approved in 2002, which rendered them a disastrous crop. Just as with the introduction of chemicals in farming, they now fear they will run into debt, the only escape from which is suicide. In the last few years, thousands of farmers have committed suicide. Others try desperately to pay off their debts by selling a kidney. The US corporation Monsanto, that had acquired the old established Indian seed company Mahaiko, promised that the new, genetically modified cotton plants would produce higher yields and ensure better quality. Thanks to gene manipulation, the use of pesticides could be reduced, as the plants produced their own insecticide. Expecting higher crop yields, the farmers were persuaded to purchase Monsanto seeds at quadruple the price. They took out loans with banks and seed dealers at enormously high interest rates. Yet the anticipated bumper crop failed to materialize. Diseases and insect-ridden plants forced the farmers to use more of the expensive chemicals. Their expenditures rose, driving their bank debts higher at the same time. This had not been mentioned by the video cassettes distributed freely all over India promoting Monsanto's genetically modified cotton, the Bolgard cotton. They only promised the farmers happiness and prosperity. The plant is uh, embossed with uh, all sorts of diseases like uh, trips, aphids and uh, jacids. So there are you see, many balls which are falling down before it becomes, uh, before it be yields the cotton. Uh, the price of this is uh, 1600 rupees. Mamul rakha lai te? Mamul rakha lai te, I have 400 rupees. So that's a 400, other varieties, you know, that is 400 rupees. 350 to 400 rupees. This is bollworm, attack of bollworm. So what the company claims, this variety is resistant to bollworms. This is bollworm. Bollworm in the bollgard cotton. That's a BT cotton. Since he owes uh, money to the bank, they will not give you in the uh, future. No, he has, uh, the, the, uh, no, now he is left with two options. One is to sell away a, a part of his uh, property and clear the debts, or consume uh, poison and uh, take poison and commit suicide. He has left only, he has two alternatives. Either commit suicide or uh, repay by selling away or disposing the property. The saddest thing for me is that every failure from the perspective of a poor peasant and a small farmer in this country is not a failure 
from the perspective of these companies. I, in fact, traveled with one of them about two decades ago. And they said,